So a differential equation is an equation with an unknown function and one or more of its derivatives. Okay, that's all it is. It's an equation with some unknown function and one or more of its derivatives. Let me give you an example. So ex, ex means, means example. So this is a differential equation. So y double prime plus y equals zero. So that's a de, right? De, de means differential equation, right? It's the second derivative of y plus y and it's equal to zero, right? That's it, that's it. Uh, what is the answer to this de? Well, actually I have it memorized. It's c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x. Okay, you'll be able to figure that out in 30 seconds once you're ready for the second test, right? So this, this models a, a wave or a vibrating spring, which can be thought of as a wave as time goes on. So this is a DE, and this is a solution to the DE. So if you took the derivative of this twice and you plugged it in, it would be equal to zero. So differential equation is an equation with an unknown function, which we found via magic, and one or more of its derivatives. Whereas a regular equation, is different, right? This is going to seem silly, but like sometimes it's good to be silly. X plus two equals zero, right? That's an equation. Hey! Oh, you're already here. Uh, sorry, welcome back. That's an equation. And if you were to solve this equation, you would just get X equals, what would the answer be in this case? Negative, negative two, like a pro. Negative two, good. Yes, we got one. Yeah, <laughs> so it's negative two. <laughs> no, yeah, on the test. Extra credit, no. Uh, <laughs> Too much fun. Um, so that's a regular equation, and the, reg and the answer is just a number. A differential equation has a function, and the answer is a function, right? This can, be model this, this can be used to model a spring. So if I have a spring with a weight, and I let it go, it'll do this, right? And as time passes, you can model that like a wave function, right? This, this can be used to model that. So differential equations can be used to model things in physics, in different areas of science, in chemistry, in biology, in finance. Uh, the Bloch-Scholes equation is a famous equation that can model the price of a stock option. Super, super famous. I think those guys won the Nobel Prize for that equation. I'm pretty sure. I just got goosebumps. Um, so, yeah, really, really big stuff. So that's why there's a whole class. If you think about it, that's why it's taught at this school, right? Why do we even have this class, right? Out of all the math in the world, why DE? Because it's important, right? So cause that's, that's why they have this class. All right. Let's talk about types of DEs. So you'll have a question on your test where it'll ask you, oh no, not yet, types of DEs. Almost there. This is really easy. So there are basically two types of DEs, right? Uh, the first type of DE would look like this. So dy dx plus plus 3y equals e to the 6x. e to the 6x. So this is the differential equation. It's the first derivative of y plus three times y equals e to the six x. This is called an ordinary differential equation. The reason is it has an ordinary derivative. You might say, what do you mean ordinary? Just like a derivative from calc one, right? dy dx. So it's called an ODE, ordinary differential equation. At some schools in different parts of the world in this, and, and the country, this class is called ODE1, right? Ordinary Differential Equations 1, or, or Introduction to ODEs, right? So instead of ordinary derivatives, you can have things called partial derivatives. If you haven't had Calc 3, no worries. We'll learn about partial derivatives later on, probably not next week, but the week after. So here's a, a famous DE from physics. So that's read del. It's del, 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 del. So del square root of u over del x squared plus del squared u over del y squared equals zero. This has partial derivatives, right? Partial derivatives. This is called a partial differential equation or a PDE. If you're wondering what a partial derivative is, I guess I can tell you. So the regular derivative of a function is the rate of change of y with respect to x. It's the slope of the tangent line, or loosely speaking, the slope of the function. Del u del x would be the change in u in the x direction. Del u del y would be the change in u in the y direction. And then there's actually something called the directional derivative in calculus three that gives you the rate of change in the direction of a vector, right? So really, really cool stuff. Anyways, we're not gonna be really focusing on these, but it will come up later in one of the things we do. So, so ordinary DEs, PDEs. You can take a whole course on PDEs. Yeah? 
So um, the PDE down there is equal to zero. Does that imply that it's like you're maximizing for something? Or no, no. Uh, I just I could put zero there. Yeah, yeah. Just. No, it's, yeah, it's in my notes. I put it there. That's, <laughs> no, this, this, yeah. Let's talk about the order of a DE. So this is this next thing is actually on the test. So what's number one? Order, order of a DE. Order of a DE. I should write down what this is because this, is, this will be on the test. So the order of a DE, the order of a DE is the order of the highest derivative. So is the order of the highest derivative. So of the highest, the highest derivative. Derivative. Let me pause here. We got time. We got plenty of time. We're only going to try to finish chapter one today. Maybe we'll start 2.2 for fun, but I, I, I want to spend some time on the homework and take it easy. So the order of a DE is the order of, of the highest derivative. So like this is, this would be order one, because this is the first derivative, right? Because that's, that's, the, that's the biggest derivative we see. Let's do some examples. EX means, means example. Okay, all right, I can do that one, it's not bad. My notes are interesting, so here we go. So d squared y dx squared mm. plus x dy dx. Uh, equals sine 4x. So sine 4x. Sine 4x. Sine 4x. It's following me still. So sine is just, I forget it's there. It's like, huh. <clears throat> What do you think the order of this DE would be? Second. Second, yeah, two. Order two, second order. Yeah, absolutely, right? Because the two, right? The order, it's the biggest, uh, biggest derivative, right? So two, the answer is two. It's it, order two. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's DE. You know DE. Some stuff. So the, the order. So it's the order of the highest one. That's it. That's it. That's it. Uh, one more. Oh, okay. A couple more. How about this one? DY DX. This is going to seem easy, but you know, it's okay. Sometimes it's good to do easy stuff. So DY DX plus five equals uh, e, e to the X. E to the X. What do you think uh, the order of this one would be? First, what's your name? What is it? Luigi. Luigi? Yes, really? Awesome. All right, so so order one. Good, Luigi. Like Luigi, like. Oh, yeah. Yes, I, was, I didn't want to say yeah. Oh, it's so great. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, good, Luigi. So order order one. Ugh, never mind. I was there was something we do later that sounds like Luigi, but it's not. Uh, we do Bernoulli differential equations. <laughs> yeah. So, and I, I I'm pretty sure he was in a. It's an Italian name, but he's not from Italy. It's, yeah, someone explained it to me once, but one more. So you have D4. Yeah, we do Bernoulli differential equations later, so that's pretty cool. Those are fun. I love Bernoullis. That, that's good. That's exciting. Someone asked about what's cool. 1999X. 1999X. Yeah, Bernoullis are awesome. So what do you think the order would be in this case? Four, yeah, four, order four. So order four, so four, so four is the order. So four is the order, four is the order. Any questions on the order? It seems pretty easy, right? I think the order is the order of the highest derivative. By the way, the original function is the zeroth derivative, right? So y, you can think of y as the zeroth derivative, right? Uh, just, just for fun, just, I, I, I just, it's too late already. We have to talk about it now, because if you recall from Calc 2, the formula for x minus c to the n, uh, Taylor series. Remember you had the nth derivative, the zeroth derivative corresponds to the function. Remember that from Calc 2? You plug in zero, you plug in one, you remember the Taylor series? Um, so the zeroth derivative is the original function. Kind of, kind of random, but it's kind of interesting. I haven't taught Calc 2 in like a year. So, well, no, six months maybe. The next topic is hard. The next topic is hard, so we'll do as many examples as it takes until you get it. It's on linear versus nonlinear. This is pretty tough. This is probably, it's probably the hardest thing we're doing today, uh, is this, the trickiest thing. So linear versus nonlinear. This morning I had a student from my, who was in my class like four years ago, and he sat in, uh, and we went over this, and he, says, he, he said to me after class, I finally get it. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> And he got a name class. He had like the top score on the final, right? So he's like, I understood it back then, but I was kind of just doing it to get the, you know, and I was like, no. 
So he's like, I finally really get it. It's always easier the second time around, right? So linear versus nonlinear uh, DEs. So I'm actually going to write the definition down of a linear DE, like the long, elaborate definition. And then I'm going to show you how to think about it in words so that you can think about it in your head and you can actually do the problems. So a DE is linear in Y. So is linear in Y if it can be written, so it can be written, written, writ, written, in the form. So if you can write it a certain way, okay, if you can write it a certain way. But I'll just tell you in words, and then I'll write it. Basically, y and all of its derivatives are to the first power, and in front of y and all of its derivatives, you have only pure functions of x. So we have to write a pure function of x, times the nth derivative, beautiful stuff, plus. So a pure function of x, a sub n of x, times the nth derivative. Looks really scary, doesn't it? But it's just a pure function of x times the nth derivative, right? That's, that is d n y, like that. The n, the n is on the d, right? That's uh, called Leib Leibniz notation, right? Leibniz notation. Plus, Dot, dot, dot. Let's go, let's go down to the first derivative. So a pure function of x times the first derivative. Let's go down to the zeroth derivative. A pure function of x. What would the zeroth derivative be? Y. Y. Good. What's your name? Yeah. Oh, did you say it? It wasn't you? Oh, oh so zero is so <laughs> well. Uh, oh, function. Yeah. The function. Yeah. This, the original function is, 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 the, is the zero derivative, and that should be equal to g of x. So if you can write it like this, we say it's linear in y. This is what's in the book. Like if you open the book, um, this is what you see. So pure function of x, derivative. Pure function of x, derivative. Pure function of x, zero derivative, right? And then you have a pure function of x over here. So y and all of its derivatives are to the first power, and you only have functions of x in front of them. Like I can't have a y here. Game over, okay? So let's do a bunch of these until you get it. The questions will say linear or nonlinear, and we'll also go ahead and find the order as well, just for some extra practice. Okay, so, so let's see. So linear, linear, or nonlinear. Generally, nonlinear DEs are very difficult to solve, right? They they create problems, right? A lot of them, you just have to approximate the solutions and stuff. They're they're oftentimes like they're the study of like research. A lot of work goes into this stuff, uh, and then we'll also find the order. So order. So A, I see I have notes, I think. Yeah, and I think they're, yeah, there's good examples here. Yeah, 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 it's not bad. Y double prime plus three, I'll change my notes, three X Y prime plus X cubed Y equals zero. Okay, equals zero. So that's a differential equation. This is actually pretty tough to solve. We, the only way I know how to solve this would be using power series, and it would be a huge mess. Um, so we, we wouldn't learn to solve something like this until the end of the course, actually. This, this kind of ruins everything. And this, so does this. So, yeah, all the x's just mess everything up. Um, so what's the order in this case? What's the order? What do you think? Second, second, order. second order. Yeah, so order two. That, that's the easy part. So let's do that first. So order two, that's because it is the second derivative. Do you think this one is linear or nonlinear? What do you think? It's linear. <laughs> it's linear. It's okay. Good try. 50, 50 chance that's linear. <laughs> the reason it's linear, I'll explain it in words, is y and all of its derivatives are to the first power. And in front of y and all of its derivatives, you have pure functions of x. Pure function of x. Pure function of x. Function of x. Right? The number one. So y and all of its derivatives are to the first power. And in front of y and all of its derivatives, you have functions of x. Let's do more of these. B, B. How about this one? Uh, y triple prime plus 3y, y double prime plus y equals e to the x. That's so y equals e to, yes? So what does it mean? Say, say that again? I don't, I don't get what you mean by to the first power? Oh, so you can't have something like this. Okay. 
right? It's got to be just Y prime, right? Or just Y or Y triple prime. Good. Uh, um, uh, I forgot your name. How do you say it? Urash. 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 It's easier like that. Oh, that's how it's spelled? Yeah, U-R-O-S. Oh. Oh. Serbian, that's, that's awesome. Urash. Urash. Good Urash. Uh, what's the order in this case? Three. Three. Order three. Order three. And do you think it would be linear or nonlinear? No. Oh, you got it! Yes! I didn't think anyone would know. I thought you could say linear. I was like, no. Wow! Yes! Are you ready for the test? Oh. Yeah, because the y, right? You can't have that, right? It's got to be a pure function of x, right? This ruins everything, right? It's so bad. So nonlinear. Again, this would be really hard to solve. Like, I. I don't know how to solve this one. I don't know. Like if you said solve, I'd say, I don't know, I give up. Like I, I should be able, I, I don't know, I'd have to Google it <laughs> for, for a whole weekend, right? That three Y, I mean, that's gonna give you some, you'd have to use series or something. I don't know, it's, it's tough. There's some, these, you can't just make these up and do them, right? D's, I mean, there's people who do this for a living. Like, that's their job, like um, some seriously hard stuff. Do you see why? I'm, no, I'm guessing, but um, so, the first, the, the first co I guess you call it coefficient, but y, y uh, cubed, or y to the third power. There's a one there. Y, uh, the third derivative of y. Uh, and the second uh, coefficient in the uh, equation is 3y times y to the second derivative. But one of those, fir but no, one of those first two terms, are they, why are they not equivalent? I mean, I mean, you can't. This is just y. This is not a power. It's a derivative. Lower. Right, you're thinking of y times y squared, which is um, y cubed. So, okay. Um, so, okay. Um, earlier you mentioned that, uh, uh, like some courses, like they have like ODEs as like, like, like one course. Mm -hmm. um, like this one. Yeah. Right, right. Um, other mm -hmm. courses, um, I've, I've noticed that like they do DEs and linear algebra together. Um, yeah. And with with that with that equation. Um, Ooh. We do linear algebra in this class too, but go ahead. Um, yeah, yeah. So, to the extent that DEs and linear algebra are kind of similar, um, do we do anything with like linear independence? Or yes. Independence? So, would that, would that equation be not linearly independent since it's not linear? Well, you have to talk about the functions themselves being dependent or independent. I couldn't answer that in this case. I don't know. Okay. Right. We will do proofs though. Yeah, on the second test, chapter four, what's your name? Daniel. Good, Daniel. Yeah, we're going to be doing proofs, like hardcore math proofs, uh, linear algebra proofs, which is kind of fun. It's good. Yeah. Would that be the same as y squared to the second derivative? This? Yeah. No, this is just y times the second derivative of y. Oh. Yeah, it's just y times this. Yeah, good question. Yeah, the notation is pretty, pretty intense. Let's keep going. I have more, more examples. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. So this next example is kind of easy, but I don't know, you know, who cares, right? Easy is good. x squared dy dx plus y equals the number 7. This, is, this one's a little bit easier. So I guess first we should talk about the order, because that's always easy. What's the order? What we do? 1. You got this. There you go. Coming back. Order 1. Order 1. Good. It's good. Order 1. Order 1. Very good. And... Do you think, is it, is it linear or is it nonlinear? What do you think? It's linear. It's, it's linear. it's linear. It's linear. It's linear. It's x. It's x squared, so it's okay. You see it, Luigi? Yeah, yeah. So it's okay. So it's linear. So it's linear. So it's linear. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we did it, right? So, yeah, I said it was easy, right? But no, it's, it's pure function of x, so we're okay. There's a 1 here, so we're okay. You just can't have y's there. You can't have y's in front of the y's or der other derivatives. Let's keep going. Let's do them as many as it takes. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Oh, I gotta turn the page. <sighs> page one done. I don't wanna do this problem. That means we should do it. <sighs> I, don't, I don't wanna do it. I don't like this problem. There's one like this in your homework, and this morning I was eating breakfast, and I looked at it, and I thought, oh, I hate this problem. And I almost deleted it. I thought, no, they should know how to do it, and I left it in. So now we're doing it. So dy equals zero. <laughs> This will not be on your test. I'm not going to put one like I don't like this problem. Why? Because it requires some work. All of these, you can just look at them, right? But this, we've got to do a little bit of it. It's one step. So we have dx, some stuff with dx, some stuff with dy. 
We need, we need a dy dx. What can we do to get that? What can we divide by? Dx. dx. Yeah. That's what, that's what I didn't want to do. That's what I was like, oh, I'm lazy. So, ugh, extra work, right? Like, this, this is the, this, I know, it's really bad. Like, that's the part I didn't want to do. That's why I don't like this problem, because now I, oh, I got to do this first. Plus 4x times dy dx. And that's equal to zero. I just didn't want to have to do that extra step. It's kind of lame, but it's okay. It's all right. What's the order in this case? One. Yeah, order is one. So order order is one. We only we only solve order one de's in the first test. Second test, it's like higher order. That's when we do the linear algebra stuff. Mm -hmm. Third test too, it's higher order. Fourth test as well. Um, is it linear or nonlinear? What do you think? Yeah, it's linear. Yeah, it's linear. It's linear. It's actually linear. And this was my other class. We did this one, and it was bothering them because they're like, "Well, it doesn't look, you know, it doesn't look like this, right?" Well, it does if you make it look like that. The thing's really slow. It's like dying. Hello. So you can make it look like that. What you can do is you can add the x over, so you get 4x times dy dx. And then uh, the y hangs out, so plus y, and that's equal to um, positive, x. positive x. Thank you, I zoned out. I was thinking about something else. <laughs> um, so that, now you see it fits the form, right? Pure function of x, dy dx. There's a 1 there, so that's good. And look, first power, first power. That's your g of x, right? That's way over there. So, so life is good. It works out. Let's do another one. A, B, C, D, E. Let's keep going. I'm actually going to make one up that's not in my notes because I think it might be beneficial. So E. Here we go. dy dx squared plus xy equals e to the x. It's good in here. Like the air conditioning. It's nice. It smells like math. <laughs> What's the order in this case? One, yeah, I was like, oh, it's a two. No, the order is one, right? That's an evil. I was supposed to trick you, but it didn't work. So order is one. Very good. Is it linear or nonlinear? It's nonlinear. Why is it nonlinear? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's being squared. It's got to be to the first power, remember? So y and all of its derivatives. I kept saying it, but we never actually did it until now. So you see now it's squared, so that's no good. So it's nonlinear. Right? Y and all of its derivatives have to be to the first power, right? Have to be to the first power. Let's do another one. A, B, C, D, E, F. I like doing these. Oh, what's this? This threw some people off also in my morning class. X squared dy dx. Well, one person. Uh, one, well, at least one person that said something. Uh, plus cosine of x plus y times y equals 17. So it's a cosine of x plus y, not just cosine of x or cosine of y, it's both. Right, it's kind of weird. So what's, what's the order in this case? One, yeah, order's one. Order, order's easy, right? Usually, it's, the, it's like the easy part. Is it linear or nonlinear? Nonlinear, non yeah, because the this, it's not a pure function of x. It has a function of x and a function, it's a function of x and y. It's got an x plus y. So because of this, it's going to be nonlinear. So that ruins everything in that case. So nonlinear. 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 Even if it was just cosine y, it would be it would be nonlinear. Be nonlinear. You think you got this? Any, any questions? Can we do one more? Yeah, okay. I'll make one up because I don't like the example in my notes. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, uh, oh, I don't know what to do. Okay, okay, okay. I know, I know. X, Y, double prime, plus uh, Y times Y prime equals zero. It's pretty, it's a weak attempt. <laughs> What's the second order? Nonlinear, yeah. My weak attempt. Yeah, nonlinear because of the y, right? You can't have a y in front of the derivative, so nonlinear. I think I think you might uh, you might have. We'll, we'll we'll do more today too. 
because well, we're going to do homework today. We'll have time, right? We'll actually do homework. I'll turn this off when we start doing homework because it's hard to see the thing. Maybe, I don't know. So we'll actually do, we'll go through and do a bunch of homework problems today. Homework is pretty tough. Any questions on the linear and nonlinear stuff? So it's probably the trickiest, well, one of the trickiest things we do today. All right, let's talk about solutions to DEs then. So solutions, solutions. So there's different types of solutions to DEs. This, this, is, this is like three sections, even though it's only chapter one. Um, it's just all the important stuff. I basically looked at all of chapter one and just took out all the important stuff from all the sections and put them into one section and called it chapter one. Um, so uh, say you have, here's an example, call it an example. Say you have y equals uh, 3x squared plus c. Say you work out a differential equation and that is the answer that you get. So the c is going to come from the integration. That's going to be like your arbitrary constant of integration. So you have infinitely many solutions here, one for each choice of c. This is called a parameter, and there's only one of them. So this is called a one-parameter family of solutions. One-parameter family of solutions. So really fancy name, right? A lot of terminology of solutions. When you read the homework questions, you'd be like, oh my god, what did it just say? It's like really, really intense, but it's not that bad. It's just, it's all conceptual and it's a lot of definitions. So one parameter family of solutions. Sometimes you solve differential equations and you get answers like this. Y equals C1 times e to the 2x plus C2 times e to the 4x. This will come up on exam two, right, on exam two, we'll solve Ds. We saw one at the beginning of class two with the sine and the cosine. That can be mo the model's a wave. Um, this is called, well, if you had to guess, not a one parameter, a two parameter. Yeah, and if it was three Cs, it'd be a three parameter, right? So this is called a two parameter, two parameter family of solutions. You might be wondering, like, why do they call it family? Um, so in mathematics, a set is a collection of objects. Like you can have like the set of all numbers, the set of all real numbers, the set of all letters in the alphabet, right? Um, <clears throat> so sometimes people use the word family instead of set. So it's just a common thing in higher level math. A lot of books like to do that. And the family of all solutions or the family of all matrices, they'll use that word instead of set sometimes. People use the word family. So um, one parameter, two parameter. Sometimes uh, you'll be given some conditions, some things that you can use to find the C's. And when you do that, when you use those conditions, you're basically picking values here. So if you have an infinite family of solutions and you pick particular values, like say we pick the particular value of four, and then we pick the particular value of seven, then what we've done is we've picked a particular solution. This is called a particular solution. I said it that way on purpose, just to kind of give the name some motivation. I don't really know if that's why it's called particular solution, but it kind of makes sense, right? You have an infinite family, and you're picking a particular one from that infinite family. This has no C's. The C's are arbitrary parameters. They come from integration. Um, so this is free from arbitrary constants, or arbitrary parameters. This is free from arbitrary parameters. This is a big concept. These are really, this is stuff for the whole course. Like, it just, you'll, you'll see it come up in the homework or I'll say, it. oh yeah, and the particular solution, oh, no, now we have to find the particular solution. We'll be doing it later in the course. So whenever it's particular solution, you know it's not going to have any C's, okay? It's not going to have any C's. So if you have one C, it's a one parameter, two C's, it's a two parameter. If you have no C's, it's particular. If you get y equals zero, y equals zero is so important, it has its own name. It's called the trivial solution. So trivial solution. All of these have a name together, right? So we've solved for y explicitly in terms of x, right? There's, on, there's only x's here, only x's here, only x's here. These are all called explicit solutions. This is really important for the test. If on the test it says find an explicit solution, that means solve for y. Okay. If it doesn't, then you just do whatever you want, right? Um, I usually try to just not specify, but sometimes I accidentally specify. It's better if it's not explicit because that means you don't have to solve for y, right? Um, 
Uh, what's the opposite of explicit? Does anyone know? Implicit. implicit. Yeah, so when, what's an implicit solution? Well, it basically means you don't have to solve for y. So most of the time it's that. You, I like to leave it usually to the solution technique, or, or if it's like really easy to solve for y, I'll say explicit. Some techniques will naturally produce an implicit solution, or some techniques will naturally produce an explicit one. If it's, if it's easy, usually it's explicit. So like ln x plus y equals e to the y plus x squared plus c. Like I'm, I, I don't know how to solve that. For y, it's probably impossible. This would be, this would be an implicit an implicit solution, implicit. Because we, we, we have y, and it's implicitly defined in terms of x by the equation on the board. So it's an implicit, implicit solution. So those are the different um, solutions to DEs, solutions to DEs. So mm -hmm. Yes. So explicit is when you have y explicitly defined in terms of x. So you have how many x is there. Implicit is an equation where y is implicitly defined in terms of x by the equation. Good question. Good. Uh, I forgot your name. Anna. Anne. Oh, you never told me. Oh, no, Anne. Anne? Anna. 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 Very simple. So, so how do you look at that and then just know it's implicit? Um, oh, because it's not y equals stuff with x. <sighs> Yeah, wise boy on both sides. Mm -hmm. Good, Anna. Yeah, and and good. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Let's do an example. Let's do an actual problem. Okay. Just, this is just a random problem. I always want to skip it, but I did it this morning, and, and it, I'm glad I did it. Let's just do it. Every semester, I, I never want to do it, but let's do it. Show. It's easy. It's just, but maybe you don't know how to do it. So, show that y equals one over x is a solution. To, and then here's the DE. The DE is uh, xy prime plus y equals zero. So xy prime plus y equals zero. That's a nice problem. This leads into something else, so it's, it's important to do it, I think. Yeah. We're also going to find something called the interval of definition when we're done. So I'll, 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 and, uh, I'll say that here. Find the interval interval of definition. This is a big deal in the homework and on the test. So this is, this is a tough, tough, tough concept. Interval of definition. Uh, the interval of definition, you can write it down if you want. I, I, probably, I probably should write it down. Uh, the interval of definition is the largest interval over which the solution is defined. Okay, so, so this is the largest interval over which the solution is defined. I'm going to write that here. This is the largest interval, I'll go slow, interval over which the solution is defined. So where the solution is defined. So over which, over which the solution, it's a really technical definition, um, is defined. And the homework does a really good job with this. Like they do really good um, with this. Like they're really pro. Like it's correct. Um, the book is good in that regard. The book is okay. I've read most of it or some of it. It's all right. It's a DE book. I mean, none of them are awesome. They're just, just okay, right? It's just average. So find the interval of definition. Okay, so first we have to show it's a solution. So what that basically means is we just have to take the derivative of this and then just plug it in and make sure it's equal to zero. Okay, so I'll do it over here. So solution. All right, so first we have to take the derivative of 1 over x. So um, in order to do that, you, you might have it memorized. You might not. If you don't, you have to rewrite it, right? You can bring the x up like that, right? Then you take the derivative, right, using calculus. Oh, it's the first time using calculus today. So y prime, so, that's right, very good. Negative x and x to the negative 2, very good. Luigi, yes, because you subtract 1, right? Put the negative in the front and then subtract one. By the way, any math majors here? Anyone? Wow. Minor. A math minor. That's pretty good. That's good. It counts. Yeah, let's see. <clears throat> so then I'm going to bring it back down. So y prime. That's awesome. So that's our derivative, right? Eventually you memorize it. Uh, I remember I memorized it when I was in Calc 2. How do I remember that? Because I remember hating, to, uh, hating this. I'm not liking this. I got so sick of doing this. I remember I was writing on the top right corner. I said, I'm sick of this. I'm going to memorize this. Like my hand was hurting from doing so much math. And then I memorized it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying you should memorize it, but it might be worth it. 
All right, now let's plug it in. So let's plug into the DE. So plug, plug into DE. Let's plug, let's plug this into the differential equation. So we have x, y prime, plus y equals zero. Actually, I'm gonna write down the DE. We have x, y prime, plus y. And that's equal to, let's be really formal. So we're showing it's a solution. So we can't just put zero here, right? We have to like show it, right? So you start with one side, then you show it's equal to zero. So we have x times, and then y prime is negative one over x squared. So it'll be negative one over x squared. Plus y. Uh, thanks. Thanks. I, zoned, I almost messed up. That would have been a point. I need to eat. These cancel. Oh, look at that. What's this going to be equal to? Zero. <laughs> Woohoo! We did it! <laughs> it's like a little baby proof, right? Yeah, we'll be doing proofs as. as uh, he was saying, when we do linear algebra, we'll do some linear algebra proofs. We'll do some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, we do a lot of math in this class, like a lot, a lot. <clears throat> so that's it. We've shown us a solution. That's it. We're done. Now we have to find the interval of definition. This is really technical. So there's a couple ways to do it. I'm going to graph it, 1 over x. So 1 over x is a function. I have it memorized because I teach college algebra. It's a bad reason, but it's true. So it looks like this. It has two asymptotes, a vertical and a horizontal one. I'm graphing 1 over x. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to graph 1 over x. Because we're going to look for the interval of definition. <laughs> good, good question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So it looks like this. Just from memory. It's called a rectangular hyperbola, according to Wikipedia. I looked it up. Um, why? I don't know. But think about it. It's a hyperbola, and it's like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's weird, right? Is it based on like where it's like symmetrical, like the axis? I think so too. I think it's symmetric. That y equals x goes through it, I think, like this, right? Because normally hyperbolas, they open left and right and up and down. This is like, it's weird, right? So the domain of this function, this is really interesting, um, is negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. That's the domain of the function. Okay? That's the domain. The problem wants the interval of definition. So in mathematics, an interval is a connected set, at least in, in terms of real numbers. So that means that if you have an interval, if I pick an x value here and I pick a y value here, in order for this set to be an interval, every number has to be there. Yeah. So every number between x and y has to be there. That's the definition of an interval. Given any two points in the set, every number in between them also has to be in the set. Is that called like bijective? No. That's something else. But, but I know what that is. Something, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you about that later. Um, this is not an interval. Because if I pick a number here, like negative 3, and I pick a number here, like 5, what number is missing from this set? Zero. So this is not an interval. That's a common problem in like the calculus courses, like in WebAssign. They'll say, write down the interval in which the function's increasing, and the homework will take this or something. I'm like, no, it's super wrong. It's not an interval. It's wrong, right? This is not an interval. So this is not a valid answer for the interval of definition. So the interval of definition is the biggest one. So which one is bigger, this one or this one? Well, neither. They're the same size. So you can pick either or. So the answer is this, or you can pick the other one. It's totally up to you. So it doesn't matter. You just have to pick one, right? You just have to pick one. Later on, something is going to pick it for us. That's why I wanted to talk about this example. But at this point, in, the, in what we're doing, there's no real, you know, we, we don't have anything, so we just have to pick one. So really subtle point with intervals, right? So an interval is a set. We're given any two numbers in that set. Every number in between them also has to be in that set. So really, really subtle point. I learned that in an, in an advanced calculus book. That's why I, re I remember reading that in an advanced calculus book. I'm like, wow, I never knew that. Like, you know, I took college algebra, calc 1, calc 2, calc 3, DE. I did not even know what an interval was. There's a definition for interval. I'm like, whoa, I was like mind blown. I needed to use that definition, though, to prove some stuff, which was really hard. So, um, so the definition was not that great because I still had to struggle. Um, so that's an interval. So that's that's so either of these is the interval of definition. All right, let's do another example. Let's talk or let's talk about something a little bit different. And then we're going to come back to this. This is a really cool example. Oh, this is fun. A lot of theory 
it's normally not going to be like this, right? Like next time, we're just going to be solving DEs. There's very little notes usually in this class. It's like, all right, here's some notes. Okay, we're done. Let's do homework. Like we just do homework for two hours. Like that's usually how it is. It's, today is very different. It's just a lot. So it won't always be like this. Here's an example. This is pretty cool. dy dx. I like this problem. Equals x square root of y. It's nonlinear. Already it's harder. It's nonlinear because the square root of y right, ruins everything. Nonlinear. And they give us the answer. They say that a one parameter family is, and then we have this, y equals parentheses one fourth x squared plus c squared. They give us that. That's really easy to find, I think. We're not going to do it today, but we, we could later if we wanted to. But basically, you would divide by the square root of y, you'd multiply by dx, you'd integrate both sides. That's 2.2. We'll be doing this later. It's not bad. So they're giving us the answer. So they're saying that this is a one-parameter family of solutions to this DE. So these are all solutions. There's infinitely many, one for each choice of c. So what's the question? Ah, the question's really interesting. The question is a very, very interesting one. The question is, is there another solution? So is there another solution? Right. Is there another solution to this DE? So one that's not already on the board. So I guess we could just look at it and try to think, what can we plug in for Y? What can we make up? What's something simple? that you can make up that will make this work? What's the simplest thing in the world? Zero. Yeah, so the answer is yes. Y equals zero, and I'll show you why. Right, so because if we let Y equal zero, which was a little bit taller, if we let Y equal zero, the derivative of Y is zero. It was like seven feet tall, would be great. The derivative of Y is, is zero. And then so you get 0 equals x square root 0. So 0 equals 0. So it checks. All right, so y equals 0 is a solution. So why is that so interesting? Well, because you can do all of the math correct, and you get this. You think, oh, I'm done. I got it right. But then you're missing an answer. It's evil. This is called a singular solution. So this is a singular solution. So basically, it's an answer that you cannot get by picking C, right? There's no C that you can pick that will give you zero. It's impossible. So I'm going to write that down. So cannot get by picking C. So when, you, when there's an answer that you can't get by picking values of C, it's called a singular solution, right? It's bad. Right, like it's really hard to find. How do you find it? You just have to look at it and think. It's really unfortunate. How do you know to look for it on test? I'll ask you. Like if you do a problem and I say find the singular solution, then you can just look at it. If you have to guess, then if you had to guess, what would you guess the singular solution to be? Zero. zero. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's going to be that, but most of the time it is, right? It's hard. I can come up with some where it's not zero, but then like they're not really good problems for a test. So. When you can get all of the solutions by picking C, you have what's called the general solution. Let me write that down. When you can get, when you can get all solutions, in other words, there are no singular solutions, by picking values of C. So when you can get every single solution by picking values of C, you, we have what's called the general solution. So when you can get all solutions by picking values of C, we have the general solution. So the general solution. Let me pause here, going fast. We have time. I think this is where my uh, morning class uh, ran out of time. Almost. No, we somehow squeezed in a couple more minutes. So notice this is nonlinear. So 
uh, when it's linear, you'll always have the general solution. We'll learn that later in chapter four. So linear differential equations, we always have the general solution. That's a theorem from differential equations. Um, so yeah, so singular solutions are solutions that you can't get by picking values of C. When you have all of the solutions, it's called the general solution. All kinds of words, right? One parameter family, two parameter family, particular solutions, trivial solutions, interval of definition. Just crazy, it's just, it's just amazing. Like so much stuff, right? It's great. Now there's even more, there's even more. Let's talk about initial value problems. These are really interesting. This will lead us to a harder example. So initial value problem. We'll be doing the entire course, these types of problems. So I'm just gonna tell you what it is and then uh, we'll do some examples. And I'll show you what it means graphically too. Initial value problems. What three letters can we use to, 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 to uh, abbreviate this? IVP, yeah, it sounds like a drug, right? IVP, <laughs> took some IVP, bro. Like, yeah, it just sounds, sounds bad. Initial value problem, <laughs> does, it sound, does it sound bad? Like, initial value problem. So, what is it? Here's an example of an initial value problem, a generic one. So you understand it, hopefully conceptually. Um, so we, and then we'll do one, a concrete example uh, right after this. Yeah, right after this. So say we have dy dx equal to, and then so over here, I wanna write some stuff with x and some stuff with like stuff with x and y. So in order to write that down, what your book does, so instead of saying stuff with x and y, they'll do this, f of x, y. So this is just some stuff with x and y. So if you see that in the book, that's what they mean. So it could be like dy dx equals you know, sine x plus y. That, I mean, it could be that, right? It's just some stuff with x and y, okay? So that's what, you, that's what the book means by that. The book will do stuff like this too. Say, so, ah, what's going on? <laughs> it's stuff with x, y, and y prime. And then they'll do this, they'll do this. That's stuff with x, y, y prime, and y. Double ridiculous, right? So they'll just they'll go all the way to n derivatives. They'll do stuff like that in the book. They're like, oh my god, what's going on in this book? But that's all they mean, right? So they just have to be able to write it down on paper so that human beings can read it. So sometimes that ends up being really hard to read. So stuff with x and y. And then we have a condition. So like y of x naught equals y naught. These are numbers, like y of zero equals two, y of three. So they'll usually be numbers. So what does this mean? So if you solve this DE, you'll get a one parameter family of solutions. So you'll get infinitely many solutions, right? Like over here, right, we had infinitely many solutions, right? One for each choice of C. So you can graph them all, right? Let's pretend, let's pretend they look like this. Like that, right? So you have infinitely many solutions, right? One for each choice of C. So what does this mean? Well, this means that, so this, this will give you a condition, right, to help you find C. So like over here, in this example, say I, had, say I had y of zero equals two. Then I could plug in zero for x and set it equal to two, and I could find C, or I could find C if I wanted to, right? I plug in zero here, set it equal to two. And you can do, we'll do it later, it's in the homework. And you find C, so you get a particular solution, you get rid of the C. So this lets you get rid of the C. So that's what this does. So you have an infinite family of solutions, and you pick a particular one from the infinite family, right? Which one do you pick? This one, the one that passes through x naught, y naught, right? Because that's what this means. That's your x, that's your y. So it picks a particular one. This picks a particular one from the infinite family. It picks the one that passes through this point. In this case, it would pick the one that passes through zero comma two. That would be the one it picks from the infinite family of solutions. If you go to an order two DE, you have two conditions. You have to take the one that passes through a point and has the same slope. If you go to an order three, it has to have, pass through the point, have the same slope, and have the same concavity, right, et cetera, right? That's what it means graphically. So it's kind of interesting, kind of interesting. But the point is, it picks a uh, particular one. Let's um, do, a problem. 
that makes uh, an infinite solution into a singular solution? Into a single solution, which is called the particular solution. Yeah, the solution to this is called a particular solution. It gives you, so this would be, let me write that down. This would be the particular solution. Let me, let me actually highlight that. Thank you, Anna. Very good. This would be the particular solution. So you have an, so the solution to this DE is an infinite family, right? Then when you have this condition, it, it lets you pick a particular one from the infinite family. By the way, this is called an initial condition. Initial condition. We can abbreviate it using two letters, I, C. Good, Anna, very good. Yes, yes. So we have infinitely many solutions. This picks one of them and gets rid of all of the Cs. And let's go ahead and maybe do a problem where we actually do that, where we actually find the C, right? Um, yeah, okay, let's do it. This is a problem, it says in my notes, like number 11. I don't know if that's still accurate. Uh, we'll find out, right? So when we do the homework later. But let's do, let's do a couple of these and then I'll let you try one, see if you can do it, because this is really important. This will probably be on the test. Very, very tricky. So this is like number 11. I'm gonna put a question mark here because I don't know. I don't remember. So maybe, probably, probably. So they give us a DE, and it's nonlinear, obviously, right? They always have to <laughs> make it really, really tough. Y prime plus two x y squared equal. After we do this one, yeah. After we do this, we do a couple. We're gonna do, we're gonna do multiple parts on this. We'll, we'll do the homework. We'll take a break, and then we'll just do homework after the break. We'll just knock out as much homework as we can, which is really good. Because um, if we don't do a bunch of homework, we'll probably get stuck. It's really conceptual. Um, so we have this, this DE, and they tell us that a one-parameter family is y equals 1 over x squared plus c. I'm going to write something else. Uh, redo. So when you're studying for the test, redo this one. Right. I'll let you know when I make the test, like, you know, I'll say, hey, make sure you know the stuff with like, you know, the interval of definition. This is, this is really important. <clears throat> so the question is, there's, there's two questions for each part. We haven't written the questions down yet. The questions are find C and it's kind of a bad question, but I'll do it. Find C and the interval, find C if possible. There, now it's not messed up anymore. Now I'm not lying. Find C if possible and the interval of definition for the IC, so initial condition, all right, so A. So the first one is, uh, y of zero equals negative one. Y of zero equals negative one. I was thinking, was, I don't think this was, on, this was not on the, I was thinking, is that on the final last semester? This was, this was on the first test last semester. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. We'll go through it really slowly. Okay, so solution. I remember before I taught DE, uh, I'd often have people come and see me they were taking DE with someone else and they would always get stuck on these problems. <laughs> I was like, wow, it's really, it's really tricky. So basically, we just have to make x zero, right? So, so we have negative one, that's our y, right? Because this means when x is zero, y is negative one. So negative one equals one over zero squared plus c, right? Just showing all the steps. So right, when x is zero, y is negative one. That's what this means, right? This means this means when x is zero, y is negative one. So we're just, we're just uh, plugging them in here. So then we just get negative one equals one over c. How do we solve for c in this case? What do we do? Maybe just reciprocal, so multiply by c, good. And then so <laughs> it looks really weird. It's really, that's not c minus one, that's bad. So you get negative c equals one, so c equals negative one. Okay, so we found c, success, right? Success, so good. So that's the first part. So basically, you just plug in the numbers, right? Everyone see how we did that? So we plug in zero here for the x, 
and set it equal to negative 1. Any questions? Essentially, what we've done is we've taken all of those and consolidated it into the single one. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And good, Anna. And now let's, let's find what. So, which one is it? Let's see. So, now it would be this one, right? If you plug it back in, this would be the particular solution. Good. Good, Anna. Yeah, so basically, we have this infinite family, which maybe looks like this. We know it doesn't, but who cares? I mean, we can pretend it looks like that. And um, we pick the particular one. We pick the one that passes through 0, negative 1, right? And that's the particular solution, right, to this initial value problem. So this differential equation, together with this initial condition, is called an initial value problem, right? It lets you pick a particular solution from the one parameter family, the solution that passes through the point 0, comma, negative 1. Okay, so how do we find the interval of definition? That's, that's the tough part, so, or the interesting part. It's not really that tough. So if you graph this using your calculator or skill, um, you can convince yourself that it has two vertical asymptotes, right? Uh, one and what's the negative one? Yeah, it's got two VAs, right? So it's got one here and then one here. So it looks like this. Love that sound. I miss chalkboards. And then it's got a horizontal asymptote, y equals zero. Because right? if you take the limit, you get zero. So also the degree on the bottom is bigger. And it passes through zero, negative one, we know that. So that's right here. So it looks like that. And if you put it in your calculator, you can convince yourself it looks like this. I've memorized. You have calculators. <clears throat> so. The domain is every number except negative 1 and 1, right? So we have to pick one of the intervals. We can pick this one, we can pick this one, or we can pick this one. So this is where the interval of definition thing comes into play. It's based on the um, initial condition. It is. Very good. Ryan? No. Daniel. Daniel. Good, good, Daniel. Yeah, it's based on the initial condition. Very good. Yes, it is. So which one would you pick, Ryan? What would be the interval? Da uh, Daniel, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Daniel, that's my name too, I should know, that's my first name. <laughs> Which one would it be? Uh, uh, so x, x is 0 minus, minus 1, so 0 minus 1, so it would be... Um, zero. So it's right here, here's 0 minus 1. Right. Oh, yeah, I was trying. Um, so it would be uh, between negative 1 and 1. That's right, that would be the answer, negative 1 to 1. So we pick this one, negative 1 to 1, right? Because that's where, it, that's where it passes through, right? So like if it was over here, you'd do 1 to infinity, right? If it was over here, you'd do negative infinity. Very good, Daniel. Yes, good, sorry. <laughs> it was so bad. Really bad with names. Uh, okay, so everyone see why we picked that one? Because it's right there, right? That's, a, that's where it is. If we didn't have this condition, did you make it? Awesome. So if we didn't have this condition, we could have picked any of them. They, were, they would have all been okay, right? But because we had the condition, the, the initial condition, I, I can't believe you said that, Daniel. You're the first person ever, ever, at least in the history of my class, to, to, know that, to know how to do that before I said it. So we picked that one because that's where it was. I know. This guy getting in the first test. 100. <laughs> Perfect score. Try to get the top score. Now, oh, I just thought of something. I just thought, why not? I wasn't going to do it, but I, just, I forgot about it. So this is kind of weird. I'll just tell you really quick before we do part B. Well, I'll write down part B, then I'll tell you. So B. So, well, you try it, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll tell you while, while you try it. Try to do this one on your own. Take your time. Take, take like five minutes. See if you can do it. All right, let me go ahead and do it. So you plug in x equals 2, right, and set it equal to 1 third. So you have, so you have 1 third. Oh, this marker, where'd this come from? Equals, <laughs> like it's like new, look at this. It's got like a sharp, uh, ridiculous. Two squared is four. What type of multiplication can we use here? Cross, right? That's great, I love cross multiply. It's like, it's like a ninja move. So this times this is four plus C. And this times this is three. I love cross multiplication. This. So C is negative 1. Yeah. Yeah. So I see the blind man. So then, no, no, it's, uh, that's good. And then so you get this. Right, and then you graph it. So there's the y-axis, there's the x-axis, there's 1, there's negative 1. Right, 
Oh, uh, looks like that. Uh, uh, uh. And then two one third, if that's one, two one third has to be over here. Right? Because this is one, so two must be over here. Right? Because if this is one, two has to be here. So what would the interval in this case be? What do you think? One to infinity, very good. One, so it changes, right? They're really cool, right? Because you do have to think about where the, it's like Daniel was saying. <sighs> Never gonna forget your name. All right, so, um, because it's over here. We have the same name, so now you, you have to get an A. <clears throat> so. Everyone see that? Everyone see why it's that? We should do another one. We should do another one. Let's do another one. This one's even harder. This is ridiculous. Wait, wait. Yeah, okay, this is just evil, but let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. C. This one's really hard. This is really, really tough. Y of 5, this is no joke, equals 0. I'll leave the question up so you can read it. Find C, if possible, and the interval of definition for the initial condition. Try to do it. Just take like three minutes. This is a fun one. Let's try it. Let's see. Solution. So if you try to do this, right, you, you, uh, you, ah, it's gone. It's not on the board anymore. It was this, this was our, our one parameter family. So if you plug it into this, you get 0 equals 1 over 25 plus C. So you multiply both sides by 25 plus C, and then something weird happens, because you get 0 equals 1, and the world ends, right? Nothing, you can't do anything, so that's impossible, right? It's a contradiction, so no. So not possible. So there is no C, right? There is no C, right? There is no C, but there is a, there is a solution. You want, you want the interval of definition, right? So it's the largest interval over which the solution is defined. So there is another solution to this DE. What's an easy solution to this DE? Y equals zero. So note, <laughs> Y equals zero is a solution. It's a singular solution, right? You can't get it by picking C. Right? You can't get it by picking C. It's impossible to get zero from that. We tried, right? We set it equal to zero. It didn't work. And we want the solution that passes through five, zero. Well, y equals zero looks like this, right? It certainly passes through five, comma, zero, right? It also passes through six, comma, zero, through zero, comma, zero, through negative 20, comma, zero, right? And then this is just y equals zero. It goes on forever. So the interval of definition is just all real numbers. Negative infinity to infinity. Really sneaky, right? That's just sneaky, right? Really, really tricky stuff. That's why people would always come see me and ask me about this question. They're like, oh, what's going on? Like, I didn't blame them. Like, oh my god, like, so tricky, right? But this is in the homework. There's one like this. So homework has some sneaky stuff. Some of it's not this sneaky. Yep. Yeah, you can't. The solution? Yeah, so if there's no solution, like if you can't find C, right, usually on the test I'll word it a different way, but since you can't find C, you're stuck doing this, so you still have to find the interval of this. You have to think about, is there another answer? So looking here, you can say, okay, y equals zero is an answer, right, because the derivative is zero. Uh, the derivative, so you, you could, you, zero does work. So zero is a solution, and the interval of definition is all real numbers. I know, it's kind of sneaky. On a test, I'd probably ask you something like, uh, find the solution to the differential equation that passes through 5 comma 0. In that case, you would know maybe not to use the original one. Someone had a question? Someone? Daniel? No, no, sorry. Oh, no, no. It's more like a comma. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if there's, if there's no um, particular solution um, because there's no C that... Um, the, I guess, equation is defined by, mm -hmm. um, then does that, that does that mean, since y equals zero, like the trivial solution, does that mean that it can be like any C? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 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 no, there is no C, right? So no matter what C you use, you're never gonna get zero. <clears throat> so this has a particular, so this is a, yeah, this is a particular, so this is a, the trivial solution. Right. Yeah, it's a particular one, but it doesn't come from this, though, so it's not a particular solution from this family. So no, it's just the trivial solution. No, no, it's not a particular one. So it's just, mm -hmm. I guess what I'm asking is, like, um, whenever you have a trivial solution, does that just mean it's, like, not defined? It just, it just means, well, in this case, 
you can't get the trivial solution from this. Sometimes you can, right? Sometimes the one parameter family is this. In this case, you can get zero from this. So not always, right? This, is, this happens to be a singular solution. That's what matters. Yes, Urash. Let's just answer it. Let's just answer it. Yeah, because sometimes you can get zero from the, from the particular one. It does happen, right? Deep question. Ooh, that, was a, that, was a, that would have been a good question. That, that's interesting. That, uh, yeah, yes? So, when, so other, like, if we don't find a C, looking at the original equation, aside from y equals zero, would it be possible to just no painting? Could it be something else? It could be. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that on a test probably, but like, let's say I'm trying to think, oh, can I do it on the spot? Let's see. <sighs> y prime plus y minus two. Well, I had to think hard for something so simple. Times x equals zero. What would be a solution here? I think y equals two. If y is two, y prime is zero. So you get zero plus two minus two times x equals zero plus zero x equals zero. So yeah, y equals two is a solution to this DE. Now, is it a singular solution? I don't know because I haven't solved this DE. I'd have to have the, the formula. formula. Yes! Yes, I'd have to have the family in order to know if it's, a particular, if it's a singular one. So that's why on a test, I usually just keep it simple, right? I just, <laughs> it's usually zero. <laughs> so, yeah. What's your name? Rafael. I thought it was that, but I didn't want to say it. Yep. You can say it in Spanish. Yeah. Okay. Rafael? Yeah. yeah. Do you know Spanish? Do you know Spanish? Huh? Yeah, I speak ten languages. No, I'm kidding. No, just Spanish and English. <laughs> no, 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 I wish. I speak Spanish. Yeah, it's my first language. Yeah. Because you're, you're, you're Cuban, right? Yeah, how'd you know that? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Como sabías? Oh, I camera. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, you know Lacey? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Any questions on this one? Any questions on this one? All right. I guess we'll take a break. I don't even want to take a break, but let's take a break. I want to keep doing. I just, I'm pumped. Let's let's take a break, and after the break, we'll um, we'll do some homework, right? We'll do some homework. Yeah, maybe I should turn this off while we do homework. Yeah, might as well. <laughs>